I pray that their testimony would be that they came on into these 40 days of fasting and prayer and you turned their situation around. I thank you, Jesus, because you hear us when we pray. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. 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 All right, let's jump into the word of the Lord tonight. I believe it was last week, Tuesday, um, how many of you were blessed by last week? I know you've already received so many words, but our time together was so special, was so special last week. And I believe uh, that God spoke to us. Yes, he spoke to us about the whispers, spoke to us about, about the fire, spoke to us about the wind, the, the, spoke to us about the earthquake, and then said, you know, but he's still in the whispers. And I shared out of my quiet time, and I shared out of my time with the Lord that morning when I was in the, U yeah, the U.S., I shared about how the Lord was ministering to me about how we find him in the whispers and we find him in the quiet and our help is in the whispers. Last week, we spoke about the dimension of help. We spoke also about how when we depend on the Lord, that it gives him the license, it gives him the access to help us and bring us to another realm. That when we increase our dependency on God, he increases his ability to help us and bring us to a new place. Uh, we, we ended off by talking about these four things and, and what God does in order to help us. And many times we just talk about us being there and God helping us. But a lot of times we don't backspace to know where God brings us to before he begins to lift us or help us. So last week we spoke about how God isolates us. We spoke about how God separates us. Uh, we continued on how God hides us um, to help us, you know, and even on that, I didn't harp on that last week too much, but it's so interesting. The Bible would even talk about how Moses was hidden as a child because he was so beautiful that he was hidden so that he would not be killed. How God hides the things he loves, how Jesus was hidden, how Mary was hidden in the house of Elizabeth and, and how she spent time with Elizabeth to know how it is to be a pregnant woman giving birth to destiny. What God does many times is he hides us to lift us and to help us. And I believe that the last point we began to look at is how God isolates us, how God separates us, how God hides us, and then how God humiliates us, how God can bring us to a place of humiliation to bring us to a certain realm to be helped by God. I feel that there are about 34 people here that the Lord is going to help in this next coming week. Amen. I, I, um, Amen. I Amen. That there's about 35 people. The Lord is about to help you. Amen. The Lord, Amen. The Lord is about to help you. The Lord is about to help you because there is a realm that God has brought you to. For many of you, God has isolated you. For some of you, God has separated you. For some of you, God has hid you. For a lot of you, God has humiliated you into a place of help. And tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I connect with the grace upon the life of my brother to say that God is about to help you in places where the Lord has brought you to, in places where the enemy has said you can never enter. God is about to help you. Oh, Amen. Man. And, and, and when I look at a man that has been isolated, a man that has been separated, a man that has been hidden, a man that has been humiliated. There are many people in the scriptures that I could use as an example to demonstrate this. Last week, we used the life of Elijah. I could use the life of Moses. I could use the life of I, so many people, but the Lord is, 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 is zeroing me into the life of David, a man who was isolated, a man who was separated, a man who was hidden, a man who was humiliated, a man who went through so much because of what God wanted to do in his life. The scriptures began to show us from 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, even through 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, the life of, uh, of King David. And the scriptures begin to talk to us about how a man can be so graced, but so hated, so anointed, but so, so, so disliked by a man who is supposed to be lifting him, yet the man is despising him. 
uh, the, the, the scriptures begin to show of a man who the Lord had to purposely isolate, had to purposely separate, had to purposely hide, had to purposely humiliate into a place of submission and help for dependency so that God can help. When you look at the scriptures, you see how David starts off in 1 Samuel, the 16th, the 16th chapter, the 17th chapter. You see a man in the scriptures, a boy rather in the scriptures at the time, uh, who, is, who is in the fields, a boy who is in the back end. And God begins to locate through the prophetic anointing and says, you will be anointed as the next king of Israel. The Lord began to speak to me and said that there's somebody on this call tonight that God has anointed you, but God has hidden you, isolated you, separated you, and humiliated you for a season. Mm -hmm. Because what he's going yeah. to do in the next season of your life is dependent on how submissive you are to the hiding process. <laughs> wow. What God is about to do in the next phase of your life is going to be contingent upon how you handle your, your series of isolation, your season of separation, your season of being hidden, and your season of being humbled. Uh, mm -hmm. What the Lord is going to do is contingent upon your defense in the season of attack. And so the Lord says through his scriptures that David finds himself in the fields. I'm paraphrasing this so that we can get to our main text. Uh, we, 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 we get to this place in the scripture where David is, you know, I'm going to paraphrase. David, you know, uh, kills Goliath, enters into the house of Saul. You understand he's now playing for Saul. He rises to the ranks. He's going to war. He's the captain of the army. All of this is happening. And the Bible says uh, that everything is fine in the house of Saul until there is a song that is sung. Mm -hmm. And the song that is sung coming back from war is David has killed his tens of thousands and Saul only his thousands. And that song that was sung got into the head of Saul to the point whereby he began to hate David from that day because he couldn't understand how a man so humble could be so helped by God. I feel that there's some people here even tonight that you're in the midst of some Saul's that are trying to understand the grace and the help of God on your life. And, and they look at you and they realize that you have not been helped by God. You, rather, you have not been helped by man, but you've been helped by God. They can't fathom that you are so graced, yet you have not done anything but submit to the will of God and the process of isolation, separation, the process of hiding, and the process of humbling and humiliation. They can't understand what God is doing and how he's doing it in your life. And so Saul begins to hate David. Are you still with me tonight? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting to my text. Yes, sir. I'm getting to my text. Uh, the Bible says, let me just set this foundation, then I'll go. Uh, the Bible says that from that day forward, David is now having to move in wisdom. He has to now move in great wisdom and understanding around Saul because David had an inclination that a man helped by God must be a man who operates in high level of wisdom because you have to understand that not everybody will like a man or a woman who is helped by God. Not yeah. everybody will understand how God can lift a man or a woman with no aid or no help. There is an understanding. There is a wisdom. There is a grace that is needed for you to comprehend the times and the seasons. And not everything should be said or broadcasted because not everybody can understand a man or a woman that is helped by God. Uh, there is a necessary uh, process by which God has to control your tongue so that you don't mess up what God has used to lift you. That you do not sabotage the lifting of Adonai because of your inability to hold your tongue when a man or a woman has been helped by God. So David yeah. understands how to be humble and how to be wise in the presence of a Saul who hates and despises him. The Bible says it gets so bad that David is forced to go on the run and David is forced to enter into a place and a phase in his life where he's on the run and he's running as a fugitive and he's literally running away. He's running because he's in this battle now between a Saul who wants to kill him and a man who is helped by God. I want to pause here. Because I don't think that you understand the dynamic that I'm trying to understand, that I'm trying to explain to its totality. It's a man 
who wants to kill another man who is helped by God. Pause. Is it my fault that God has decided to help me? Whoa. Is it my fault oh, oh, that oh. God has decided to lift me? Mm. Is it my doing that God has decided to raise me from the backfield to the palace? It's not my doing. It's not my grace. It's not my anointing. It's just the help of God. It's not no aid. It's no hand, but the hand of God. Why so? Are you hating me for not doing anything but submitting to the process of God to be lifted and helped by God? Let me understand and let me help you understand this, that it doesn't have to be an explanation. There doesn't have to be a reason by which a Saul will hate you. There are mm -hmm. Saul that God mm -hmm. placed in your life. Understand this. There are souls that God places in your life that you don't pray for, but God has to set them in your life so that you will understand that there is always a soul that is looking to kill a man helped by God. Oh my God. There, there is always an enemy that wants to destroy a man or a woman who is helped by God. Oh, but I stand in the office of the prophet tonight and I decree upon your destiny. Anybody looking for you, when they look for you, they won't find you. Uh, when they come to you, they will not find you. Uh, you will escape the hand of the wicked one. Uh, when they look for you, they won't see you. Uh, I pray you will be consumed by the power of Adonai. I can pray upon your life uh, that nobody uh, born of a woman uh, will begin to rob the grace upon your life. Uh, when they see you, they won't find you. Uh, when they find you, they won't kill you. Uh, when they have you, they won't know what to do with you. Because uh, God will give you the wisdom. I release the wisdom of God. I release the wisdom of God to know how to handle being helped and being hated. <laughs> His wisdom, his wisdom, his wisdom, his wisdom that we need to know how to handle being helped and hated at the same time. If you don't know how to decipher through the process of being helped and being hated, then you won't know how God or you won't fully see how God can lift a man. You won't sustain the realm of help. You will be helped for a season, but you cannot sustain that help into another season. Because mm -hmm. what will happen is you'll begin to sabotage your own help by God. Because you mm -hmm. don't know how to control or handle the hate and the help. But I see God giving somebody grace. Oh, Amen. Lord. I see, Amen. Some, I see God giving somebody grace on how Amen. to make and handle the season of hate and the season of hell. Somebody just Amen. say aloud, Amen, wherever you are. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible says, let me get to my text now. Let me, let me get to my text and then we'll break down through some exegesis and see where, where God leads us. Okay. Uh, so, so the Bible says, that, that David is now hiding in caves. He's, he's going from place to place. He's hiding in caves. He's, he's, he's escaping the hand of Saul. He, he's, Saul is, is now hunting for him to kill him. And Saul is just trying to kill a man helped by God. Saul is on the run. And Saul is chasing David. And David is going from cave to cave to cave to place to place, and the Bible says in First Chronicles, the 12th chapter, and this is where I want to get to. We all know the story of First Samuel and Second Samuel. We understand the story, and I spoke about it last week of the cave of Adullam, where God begins to send men who are discontented, men who are distressed, uh, uh, men who are indebted. He sends these men to David in the cave. And, and there was a process whereby God will send you people who are in need of your leadership and your grace. But then there's a also time in a season where God sends you people who don't need any training from you, but people who are just sent to lift you in your moment of despair. The Bible says in the 12th chapter and the first verse of, of, of this, oh, thank you. Oh, this, oh, wow. Family altar, you guys, you guys are amazing. Wow, this is great. This is incredible. So the Bible says uh, 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 that, that David now comes 
uh, to Ziklag. Okay, you have to understand that Ziklag is in the Philistine territory. You know the story. He's running from Saul. He ends up in Ziklag. I find it interesting that David would kill Goliath, a Philistine. David would kill somebody, then go right into the place where God had given him victory. He would go into that same place and rest there. That's a whole nother sermon. I don't want to get there. So let's pick up this scripture and then let's see where God would lead us. Okay. I believe that God is sending you people. Let's see who he's sending you. Number one. Now these are the that came to David to Ziklag while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, the helpers of war. I want to read it in my scripture in my version. This is the ESV. It says, now these are the men who came to David at Ziklag while he could not move about freely because of Saul, the son of Kish. Even though he was in a place where God was building him, he could not yet move freely because of Saul, the son of Kish. Now the Bible says that there are a few people that the Lord begins to send to David in his moment of despair. He, 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 you see, because God is in the process of sending people in, in the moment whereby you're trying to decipher between how to handle being helped and how to handle being hated, God will send you a group of people. He says that he sent David men and amongst them were the mighty men. I came here to decree upon your life. That's why I'm here. I came here to declare upon your life that God is about to send you mighty men. Amen. God is about to send you men. Amen. And women Amen. who are mighty in the land, who have the ability to help you. The Bible says Amen. not just mighty Amen. men, but, but, but David is sent helpers of the war. Literally, Amen. people who are skilled at providing assistance in a war and in a time of despair and in a time of attack. God is sending you helpers. I don't know what season you find yourself in. Family altar, I don't know uh, the, the season, the year you've had. I don't know the week that you had. I don't know the, the family situation that you're in. I don't know where the Lord has placed you. I don't know where the enemy is fighting you. But if there's one thing that I know I'm convinced of is that God is about to prepare a group of helpers that will help you in the midst of war. Amen. That God is about to... Watch this. People that you did not petition heaven for. That's where the part of no aid comes from. You didn't pray for them, but God is sending them to you. Uh, point number two. Let's go. Uh, verse number two, please. Verse number two. Verse number two. And, and the scripture says, I got my Bible here so it can be quicker. And the scripture says, they were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left hand in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Verse three. And it goes on and on and on and talks about the people that were there. It says the chief was there. Different people were there. You have to understand that David was in a place where he was preparing his army. He was building his army. He was building a defense. And I find it interesting that as he's building the defense, that God sends him not people like in the cave of Adullam that are in need, like I said before, of what he carries. But now he's being sent people who are skilled in an area that he may even be weak in. What God is doing for you and what God is doing towards you and releasing towards you in this season is God is sending you people who are skillful. Now, I want to break down what I mean by skillful is that the Bible says in verse 2, that it was men who were gifted at hurling with their left hand and also with their right hand. In other words, the Bible says that God sent David Benjamites. You have to understand that these Benjamites were descendants of the household of Saul. They were Saul's brethren. That tells us two things. That tells us that God, and this is a prophetic word, and I want you to receive this when it comes, that God has already, not he's getting ready to, God has already released into your life. People who are supposed to be enemies, God is releasing them into your camp to help you. God is not just releasing them that are in the camp that are supposed to be opposing you. But God is also releasing people who are skillful with the left and skillful with the right. In other words, what the Lord is going to do is God is sending people who 
are talented with one hand and also talented with another hand. If there's mm. another way I can say it, I will say it like this. That God is getting ready to send you an ambidextric miracle. <laughs> an ambidextric miracle is a miracle that both hinges upon the priestly and the kingly. That mm. God is about to send you a business contract and also give you keys to a building of a church. God, <laughs> God is getting yeah. ready to open up a window of financial blessing but he's also getting ready to give you an oil and an anointing to sustain the financial blessing. God is going to give you a spiritual father that will be able to release anointing upon you, yes. but also give you a boss who will be able to see the potential in you, my God. Uh, I feel this thing. God is getting ready to give you an ambidextric miracle. He's about to give you an ambidextric miracle. A miracle in the left and a miracle in the right. Uh, God is getting ready. God is getting ready to release it upon your life. A miracle that both hinges on the business and the ministry. Uh, let me break this down so you understand this, and then I'm gonna move. I, 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 I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed. My, I, I'm, you know, my mom. Uh, when I was little. My dad and my mom, uh, they, they knew that I was left-handed. And so when I went to school, I started writing with my left hand. But, you know, uh, you know, uh, at the house and, and when we would go out, because I'm left-handed by nature, I would start greeting people with my left hand. And those of us from Ghana understand what a taboo that is. Understand that you're not meant to do anything with your left hand. You can't, you can't shake hands with your left hand. You can't start from the left hand. Nothing happens from the left hand. In but fact, the left hand is supposed to be the weakest one, hand. One. Say it again, sir. It's only for one thing. It, we all know it's for only one thing. I won't say that thing here, but it's only for one thing. And we understand <laughs> that the left hand is the weaker hand. The left mm. hand is not meant to be used for anything. And I, I remember in school, apostle, uh, that my, my teachers realized that I was left-handed, but when I would go to play sports like basketball, like, like volleyball, uh, like, like baseball, they found out that I was stronger with my right hand. And they concluded that I was ambidextric. They said that I can also use my left hand as much as I can use my right hand. And one of my teachers told me, said, Ruel, don't look at that as a disadvantage, but look at that as an advantage. Because she says that there are moments where your right hand may not have the strength to do something, that your left hand will have the strength to do something. And that's where this comes into line. Because what God has already released to you is a place in world and a place in ministry and a place in life where God has set up in such a way that what you could not do with your right, God is getting ready to strengthen you with your left. That the helpers God is bringing to your life that are not gifted in ministry will be gifted in business. The helpers that God is sending in your life that were not gifted with writing will be gifted in mathematics. The helpers God is sending into your life may not be gifted with one thing, but they'll be gifted with another thing. And hear this, because God sends you helpers who are gifted with the left first, doesn't mean we neglect the left first. Just because the ministry is picking up and the business is dying, doesn't mean there's no use for it. There's use for both. You just have to know that God may send the left hand before he sends the right hand but in the end of the day oh god in the end of the day who am i preaching to today in the end of the day the left and the right come together to beautifully put together a mosaic that will be used for your purpose and your promise i decree upon all of you on this slide that what god has released to you is an ambidextric miracle the left and the right the left and the right the left and the right it's called the benjamites oh god the Benjamites, the Benjamites, uh, the Benjamites, the Benjamites. Apostle, the other day, I met with I went my I met with a, one of our, our finance guys and, and I was telling him we were putting together some budgets and all this type of stuff. And he was telling me, Apostle, about you know, we need this and we need that and we need this and we need that. And I said, Listen, God is gonna provide. I said, We are in a different season, Apostle. You understand the season we're in with our building and all. And I said, Hey, it's a difficult season right now. We're trying to just put things together, but there's still expenses, there's things that are coming, there are uh, mortgages and and staff and payroll and all these things that are coming. And my finance guy's looking at me and he 
me saying, you know, PK, how are we going to sustain what God is doing? And I told him, I said, listen, in this season and a season where you think that our finances may be under attack, I said, God is about to send us what we need when we need it. Oh, and I said, oh, that it, it, I, I said that it, I said that it may not be, it may Amen. not be right in this season that it looks as though our left hand, our business hand, our left hand has a use in this moment. It may not be that God is sending a whole bunch of money in our hands. But I said, but God is going to send men and women of God in one place that will come to us. And when they come to us, they will add a supernatural wealth and they will deposit an anointing that will attract the other side of things. I said, we are in a season where we have to discern that God won't always come through and give us miracles just because it's a supernatural miracle of oil. But we're living in the times where even out of the fish's mouth, uh, a coin will come out. It, we're living in the times where we have to discern that God may not do things the way we expected. God may not send us things in the realm that we expected. We're living in the ambidestric days. <laughs> we're living in the ambidestric days. It's the day with the left and the right. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Let me move on. That, that's the Benjamites. So if you're taking notes, number one is the Benjamites. The Benjamites consist of those that are skilled with left and right. And the Benjamites are also considered of those that are the relatives of, of Saul. So your enemies come to help you, number one. And number two, those that are skilled with left and right come to also help you. See, look, they were mm -hmm. armed. Let's go back to verse two. I just want to read it so we have context so you understand that what I was decreeing was based off of biblical principle. It says they were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left hand in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of the bow, even of Saul's brethren. That was their skill set. Their skill set was that they were gifted with left and right. Let's move on, okay? In verses eight, verse eight, the scripture begins to talk about something in the eighth verse, okay? Let's go to the eighth verse of this same chapter. And and this is the second group of people and of the Gadites, they are separated themselves unto David into the hold to the wilderness, men of might. OK, and men of war. OK, and men fit for battle. That means that the second group that God is sending is men who are ready to defend you. <laughs> it is people who are skilled to defend you your oil to defend your character to defend your honor god ha has made it in such a way that these men these women uh, these helpers these divine helpers as i call it if you're looking for a sermon title is divine helpers is divine helpers G god has sent and is sending people uh, who are divinely gifted and skilled and ready and fit for battle that, that watch this, that could handle a shield and a buckler, mm -hmm. whose faces were like the faces of lions <laughs> and were as swift mm -hmm. as the rose. Another version would say their feet were as swift as a gazelle. A feet were as swift as a gazelle. The second group of people that God is sending your way in this season, as we're in this place, is people who will fight for you. Amen. God is sending people whose faces are lions. In, this, in another way, let me say it like this, that God has sent, is sending, will send people who when you are in trouble, their face alone, will scare off any demon. God is sending helpers to you in this season. Uh, uh, prayer warriors. <laughs> that the, the, the sight of their oh, face God will scare off know. any demon, any witch, any warlock, any <laughs> anything <laughs> that comes your way. The face <laughs> of a Gadite. <laughs> the face of a Gadite will scare off any demon. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So, so the Gadites, um, let me just go back to my notes. So the Gadites were joined in the stronghold of wilderness. They were mighty men of valor. They were men trained for battle. They could shield, they could use the shield and the spear, meaning that what? That they were good with offense and defense, okay? They could handle being on the offensive side and they can handle being on the defensive side. They're, they're the weapons they had were for both things. God has to send people to you who, who firstly know how to offense and how to attack, but also how to defend. 
And I feel that many times, Apostle Jesh, uh, that God sends many of us who are in ministry. And I want you to take this down. I feel like many times, and, and I'll wrap up in a bit, that God sends us people who are gifted to pray, who are gifted to, um, uh, who are anointed and are gifted to help with structures and organizations and, and all that stuff are gifted in the administration of ministry. But I feel that for men and women of God in these days and times we're living in, we need God to raise up people who will know how to defend the oil of their fathers. We need people that, that will be raised up on how to defend as well as attack. Yes, we can cast down demons. We can destroy strongholds. Yes, we can pray and release things from heaven. But we're also in need of God sending and raising men and women who can defend in the time of attack. The Bible says that their feet, their feet were as gazelles. In other words, they were fast and they were on point. <laughs> they had stamina. You see, gazelles can burst with a speed of 60 miles per hour or with a sustained speed of 30 miles per hour. God is sending you in this season, faith gathering. God is sending you people who are on point and helpers who are sharp and to the point. I feel like there's somebody here. God is sending you up with a new business, okay? And this new business Man. God is sending you. You need somebody whose feet is as swift as a gazelle. Uh, you've been looking for an assistant that can assist you in the many things that life is bringing. And I hear the Lord say specifically that he's about to send you people whose feet are as swift as a gazelle. They're so on point and they can sustain the stamina of where you are going as a leader as a pastor, one of the most frustrating things as a businesswoman, as a businessman, can be to have a vision and a plan, but not have people who can run with that vision and plan. But when God sends you helpers whose feet are as swift as a gazelle, is that God is sending you people who are agile and on point. God is sending you people, helpers, that have the ability to be agile. Okay, let me tell you the last group of people God is sending, the last group of helpers, and then I'm, I'm out of here. The last group of helpers, there's like two or three more, but I'll send you the last group and then I'll be on my way, all right? Uh, the scripture says it like this. <laughs> then some of the sons, this is verse 16. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. And David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, if you have come peacefully to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if you betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of your fathers look and bring judgment. Then the spirit came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, we are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace. and peace to your helpers. <laughs> For your God helps you. The last group of people that I want to speak about tonight is, is, is those from Judah and those from Benjamin. They were mixed. They came. It was sons of Benjamin and sons of Judah. And the Bible says that there were people who recognized a man and a woman who had been helped by God. Okay. The Bible talks about it and says that Judah, the sons of Judah and the sons of Benjamin came to David. And when they came to David, they said one thing. They said, we are for you. The last group of people and helpers. And I want you to receive this. I said, I came here to just decree, to declare. That's all I came here tonight to do, to speak it, to prophesy into your lives, mm -hmm. into your destinies. That's why I came here. I taught last week. This week, I'm here to decree and declare based off the foundations of the word of God. Mm -hmm. The scripture says it like this, that, that God sent them to help David. Literally, they said, we are yours, oh, David. We are on your side, oh, son of Jesse. 
peace be unto you and peace be unto us, your helpers, for we recognize a man helped by God. Uh, and they said this. <laughs> they said that they were there to help David. In other words, God is about to send you people who are faithful and committed. Amen. People Amen. and helpers who decree, who declare people like Ruth who will say, our God shall be your God. Ah, people who will say, like, like people like Peter who will say, where shall we go? For you, oh God, have the words of eternal life. Where am I to go? God is about to raise sons and daughters in ministry that will locate you, not because of what you can do for them. <laughs> but will locate you because they realize that you're a man and a woman who has been helped by God. That God is, I feel the unction. I feel the unction. I feel the unction. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> you know what the Lord just told me? The Lord just told me, Apostle, that as God, oh Jesus, hmm. Apostle, the Lord just whispered to me and told me this. He said, as God is sending people to us that have a, an inclination that we've been helped by God, as he's sending to us people who have been, who have been convicted and commissioned to help us and people who have been convicted to be committed to us, he's also exposing people who have not had a heart to be committed and to support our ministries. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I heard the Lord say that. That Amen. in this season, that the helpers that have been disguising themselves. Mm. Oh, I've come to help your ministry. I I've come to help your ministry. I've come to support you. I've come to God says mm. in the next one week, he's Thank about Ayale Brakatola. In the name of Jesus. We are he's about to expose. <laughs> The way I'm squeezing, oh my God. He's, he said he's about to expose people who have disguised themselves as helpers. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. If you go to the next verse, in that same, that same verse, watch. After, the Lord is showing me something in the scriptures. Let's go here. Let's go here. Then, I'll, then I'll, I'll be finished. Watch this. The Bible says, they say, we are yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse. Peace be to you, and peace be to your helpers. For God, for your God helps you. Watch this. Then David received them and made them officers of his troops. Understand this. How can David... <laughs> know that these are descendants of his enemy hmm. sons of benjamin benjamites okay and sons of judah how can david just ask them one simple question and they answer that we are yours we will help you and the bible says that david a man helped by God, a man who hears from God, a man who is sensitive to God, a man after God's own heart, a man who understands the presence of God, a man who is sensitive to the movements of God, a man who understands the functions, the ways, and the acts of God. The Bible says he didn't hesitate, but he received them and said this. Then he made them officers of his troops. David, I have a problem with this scripture, apostle. How can you, upon asking one question, receive people who are descendants of your enemies and make them captains of your army? Mm. Mm. How? How? It's because in as much as God will send us helpers, it's also up to us to discern who has the spirit of a helper. That's right. That's right. 
God will send you helpers, but the enemy will also send you helpers. Hey, yeah. you didn't hear that. I said, in as much as God sends helpers, the enemy sends people who are meant to distract you. He sends them in the form of helpers. He sends them in the form of sons. He sends them in the form of daughters. He sends them in the form of somebody submitted to your ministry. But lo and behold, they have the spirit of Absalom. My God. Mm. Mm. But God is letting me understand through this scripture that he's not just sending you helpers, but he's beginning to raise up and sharpen your spirit of discernment to be able to know who is truly of you, who is truly of God, who carries your destiny. Do you know, Apostle, watch this, I'm, I'm done. You know that if we had if we had, and if we were more sensitive as men and women of God mm -hmm. to the ones that God brings to us, that we would have less church splits. <laughs> you true. know that we would have less breakings. Yes, it's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we promote people who are gifted. Mm -hmm. You know what that lets me understand? Mm -hmm. so hold up. It lets me understand. There's no way that David would take people who are coming to him and make them troops if they weren't skilled. Yeah. Understand. They were Benjamites. We already read the Benjamites. They were skilled yeah. with left and right. Yeah. Okay. Do mm -hmm. that. They knew how to praise and worship. We mm -hmm. understand. And we know they were the psalmists. We understand the tribes that were coming from, the skill set, the giftings that they carried already. In other words, David had to look past the skills. He had mm -hmm. to look past the gift and he had to receive them based off the spirit of God through discernment yeah. right. to know many times. We bench who should be promoted and we promote who should be benched. Oh. <laughs> Many times we sit out those that God has actually put his grace and his anointing on to be lifted without any struggle. And we bench and we promote those that God has not anointed, but God has gifted, but not anointed for our assignment. And because we get mesmerized with the gift and the talents, because we get mesmerized with the left and the right, mm. we promote mm. them without testing them. We promote mm. them without them. We promote them without separation, without isolation, without being hidden, and without being humiliated. That's right. <laughs> we promote them without testing the spirit. And we mm. put them and say, preach. We say, sing. Mm. We say, lead the choir. They lead this mm. because of skill, not because of discernment. But David understood and knew that them coming to him, he already asked them, are you for me or against me? And the Bible said, they under the spirit, understand that Amasai said what? Under the spirit of God. It's not, it wasn't his internal doing. It wasn't his soul crying out. The Bible says the spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied and said, <laughs> we are for you. We are not against you. We recognize your help of God. It was an anointing that came upon him that led him to speak out the supernatural word that said we are for him. God has spoken a lot, but God is telling me that he's about to send you helpers that are committed and he's about to expose those who are counterfeit. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So tonight, tonight as we pray, our prayer is simple. I'm, I'm passing this over to a man of God. I'm, 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 I'm on my, on my day off. I'm working too hard on my day off. So <laughs> I'm about to pass this over to your man of God. I'm going to pass this over to your man of God. But, but God has let me understand tonight. Has let me understand. That he's exposing the counterfeit <laughs> and he's sending the committed. <laughs> he's exposing the counterfeit and he's sending the committed. God is sending us, number one, Benjamin who are skilled in left and right. right. Sending us the Gadites, those that faces are like lions and feet are swift as gazelle, who are on point, who are agile. Number two, and God is sending us the sons of Benjamin and the sons of Judah, those who are committed. And as he's sending us the committed, he's exposing the counterfeit. Lift your voice. Let's pray that prayer. God, God exposes the counterfeit helper and send every committed. <laughs> 
I want to do something. 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 Father, let's raise our hands to heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those you sent to us that will be sent to help us. But Lord God, anybody who has been hidden in our camp, anybody who has been hidden by the equipment, anybody who is hiding in our garrison that has a heart of hate and not of help. Father, we pray that your grace will locate them now. Your power will locate them now. Amen. Exposed now. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will give us the wisdom on to know how to handle those that come with an agenda to scatter and not to gather. Mm. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit yeah, under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I connect with the altar here mm -hmm. and I decree 
that everybody with an ill intention towards our destiny, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will be exposed. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost take them now. I pray, by the Spirit of the anointing of God, may they be exposed in the next 14 days. Let them be exposed. Let them be exposed. Let them be exposed. In the name of Jesus. It is done. Yeah, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Helpers are being sent your way. Please help me welcome your father and pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate God for the life of our servant? What a word. Hallelujah. What a word. What a word. What a word. I want us to pray one prayer before we pray with the man of God and then we'll pray for the man of God and we're done. I want you to pray that, Lord, let help really be help. Amen. The part of the message that hit me was, is when God sends you so many people around you, but they are not helping. Oh, Jesus. Or sometimes they want to help, but they don't have the skill to help. I want to pray that God will give you the grace to turn willing, committed people into skillful people. Because sometimes God brings people our way so we will help them to be better so they will help us. Yeah. Yeah. Or there are skillful people around you who are unwilling to help. Yeah. That one answers to power. The Bible says that in the days of thy power, thy people shall be willing. Otherwise, what is meant to be helped becomes weight. It becomes an encumbrance on your neck. I just want us to pray this one prayer that I have personally been praying since the man of God started ministering. When he spoke about God sending and be dexterous men your way. Father, let the help you have given or are given and willing men. The most painful thing as a leader is to have thousands of people around you and you need help and you can't find one. You're praying that God will correct your help system of the people around. Some of you, you have friends, but when you are in need, you don't have anybody that can, oh, just pay this 50,000 Ghana cities or $50,000 for me. I'll, I'll pay you back next week. It's not because you don't have money, but you just can't do the thing within the time frame. How many of you have a friend who can give you $10,000 type one and they won't blink? <laughs> you say, Father, fix the help system. I think for most of us, we have people around us, but it's either they are so committed, but they can't, they don't have it. Yeah. Not just finances, so they don't have the skill. They just don't have the skill. And yet those are the people God has given you. And then there are some of us too who have people who are very skillful, but they are too busy or too selfish. Father, fix the system. Amen. Is it a good prayer? Yeah. yeah. That's just um, prayer. When, when he spoke about that, that's the only thing that came to my mind. Like, hey, God, what happens when you bring people my way to help this work and yet they don't have what it takes? Or they have what it takes, but they have their own agenda other than helping me. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to talk about? Mm. I want you to lift your voice, pray this prayer in one minute. And then we are done. <laughs> you help me to help them. Okay. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to pray for the man of God. You know, I always tell Dr. Neneke and Ko that this altar you are spoiled because the kind of people who come in, the kind of word that they, they, and they share it without struggle. They share it without squeezing their faces. Mm -hmm. They share it without some assaulting. And so sometimes we are just spoiled. But this is something many pastors want to hear. Mm. This is something many leaders have to hear. And for me, I told you the last time that the kind of messages God sends to you tells you where he's sending you. Yeah. And I have no doubt, based on the people and the messages God has sent to us, that God is taking us somewhere. But I want God. to pray for the vessel. We are not where we ought to be. Oh. Hmm. We are moving. But praying, Lord, we bring your servant before you once again. Grace upon grace. Yes. Oil upon oil. He, he, he reposted his trust in you and said that you will give what he needs when he needs it. Yes. We are praying that Lord, when he doesn't even need it, just, yes. just, just throw it to him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to leave room for you to type something to pa Pastor Kofi right now. What do you want to say to Pastor Kofi? Go ahead and type it quickly. Go ahead and type it. Just say something sweet to the man of God. What do you want to say to Pastor Kofi? Go ahead and drop it quickly and let's God bless you and keep you. God favor you more and more, Pastor. Those are the Pentecost people. Mm -hmm. God bless you, man of God. Pastor Kofi, may God elevate you. God bless you, Pastor. The Lord keep you. Pastor Rua, may God expose the counterfeit in your fold. Yes. May virtue be restored unto you. Those are the charismatics. May God bring you what you need when you need it. Those are the Presbyterians. <laughs> may your oil never run dry. Those are Methodists. May, hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, just, we just love you on here. Thank you for always coming with a fresh word. <laughs> Thank you for always coming, even when you are on holiday. I, I, I know he's been moving around, preaching around. I know he really wanted to rest. I said, Pastor, I forgot. I said, you can't forget. You are supposed to be on. And um, But I am on maternity leave. I'm sure most of you know that I'm on. <laughs> so, yeah. We love you. Thank you so, so much. So today as well, we get to close early. Um, I want you to spend the remaining 30, day, um, 30 minutes just rest in God. He will be speaking to you.
Mm. Be obedient to what I say. We have closed the meeting early. Go and rest. Mm. Okay, Imelda, are you ready to share the, the t-shirts? The, Pastor Josh, is Olaf is able to share it. He has okay. it on computer. Okay, Olaf, please share. The t-shirts are ready, please. Place your orders, give them your sizes, and wherever you are across the world, um, they will be shipped to you. You can take my face off and just, oh, Yana. <laughs> my God, is it nice? You could just take me um, off the spotlight and then. So those are the the shirts. I, I believe it's cool, right? Is it nice? Do you like them? Yeah. 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 One, one is going for 60 cities. We are trying to make it um, as easy as possible. I'm sure for some of you, just you can buy about 200. Yeah. But these are the shirts. Uh, make sure you, you, you order right now. You pre-order and then it will be the work on it. Email that work on it and it will be shipped to you. How many of you love it? You love it? Me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Awesome. And as you rock this t-shirt, you will never have the cause to beg anybody for a favor in your life. Amen. Amen. I say you will never have the cause to beg anybody for a favor. God will send you and be distressed. This is a prayer Amen. me. I'm going to pray throughout Amen. the night. Amen. I mean, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, God has given us awesome men and women. And how many of you realize that the word coincides with Dr. Nana and what we shared about her yesterday? Mm. How she's been a blessing in the kingdom yeah. and it's been a blessing in the industry mm-hmm. as well. I mean, Jifa is all over the world. Jifa, are you still in France? No, sir. You, <laughs> you travel, Unkra, Ubansua, Unkra. Why are they? Congrats. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. God, God is God is blessing us in the marketplace and is blessing us even in the secret place. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. 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 So please get she's dodging me. Who, Cynthia? <laughs> please get your copy of the shirt and you'll be blessed. I'm leaving you with the time. I want you to take your time and rest before God. Allow Him to speak to you. Um, those of you who want to talk to me, please go ahead and call me. Uh, who have to, not want to, go ahead and call me. Next um, week Sunday, or this coming Sunday, we are finishing off our fast with, um, we are finishing off our fast with Apostle Newton is coming to Faith Gathering to bless us. He's going to stream on Zoom and on YouTube. On Zoom and on YouTube. The time is going to change. It's not going to be 8 p.m. It's going to be 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. That will be the final night. Mm-hmm. On Friday, Pastor Naya is coming back. Amen. Oh, nice. Amen. Amen. is coming on Thursday. I was trying to get um, Pastor Ruel's brother to come, but uh, there's quite a lot of things that they are doing uh, towards uh, some activities at home, so I don't think he'll be able to make it. But Prophet Ben is coming back. Mm-hmm. Naya is coming. Um, Saturday, I'll do Saturday night. Saturday is the anointing mm-hmm. night. Yes. Saturday is the anointing night. So please get your bottle of oil when you're coming on on Saturday night. And then Sunday will be the climax, the celebration service. We're trying to get some worship leaders to join with our in-house team. And we're just going to bless the name of the Lord for the two-hour period. Yeah. We are done. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. May God's face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he send you help. Amen. Help. May he send you men whose face is like a lion. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. May he send you demon chasing men and women to Amen. come in Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Please have a good night and let's see you tomorrow morning. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.